Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the thing that you should aware when working with Superbase. Alright, so the first thing that you need to know is that everyone can call to your Superbase even outside your application and your code base. So for example, I have my block apps right here and connect to my Superbase. And I have set up the policy, set up the configuration URL that will redirect to my block app app right here the data the user from my application will be able to fetch from here and you may think that the user can fetch only from your application to your super base but actually no the user of your application can actually fetch the data even outside your application so for example i have this user and this user is belong to your application okay but he can actually fetch the data to your super base project as well and to get the data and do any action he want outside your application outside your code base so he may be bypass some of your logic of your code because right now he can be able to interact to your database directly right now so let me show you how he can actually do it so if you look at this blog post right here if you want to know how to build this you can check out my previous video and this is the superbase project that connect with it okay so i'm going to show you that any user from this application right here can be able to call and get any data right here outside this one so to do that if you for example this to do table and if you go to api doc this show you how to interact with this table and as you can see this one uh, this is like a javascript client but they can actually use the bash and you can see this is where they can do it so right now i'm going to copy this one and probably you may ask okay how can the user know the url and things like this uh, and then which one to uh, do right but they can actually know which one is this and also they can know which API key and authorization this one as well. So the way that the user can get this one is to go into your application, for instance, this one. And right now, if you go to inspect and go to the network tab, and if you refresh, since your request right here will do it on a client, so then it will expose this one, as you can see, since this one uh, fetch on the client, so you can see this is the URL. It's kind of similar to this one but it is just fetched from different table. This is from the block content, and this is from the to-do table, okay? So if right now, if I fetch the to-do from my application, I will see the URL the same here inside this one as well, okay? So right now, if you scroll down, you will be able to see the API key and the authorization here that generate, and this one is gonna be generate if this user is locked in. Since the user is locked in, and he look at this one, and he be able to get this one, okay? But if this user lock out and he cannot be able to get this one and this, okay, all right. So, and then the API key right here will be exposed. And you may think, is it safe to expose this, that this thing is exposed? Yes, this is okay. And Superbase make it clear that the API key is okay to be public, all right. The only thing that you need to not be allowed to public is the service role key. That thing need to be in private, but this thing is okay to be public. So right now, let's actually copy this one and go to here and this one and then we can copy this and then you can come back here and then make sure that everything okay so right now let's hit send so you can see right now this user be able to read the to do okay so as you can see this is outside your application so for example uh, for example if you do any logic to read in your application that this user be able to read some certain field from your application but actually they can actually read everything outside your application uh, outside your code base so because they can talk directly to your database and they can do any action so right now this is select but they can perform any action to it so that's why right now you know how they can actually do it so that's why it lead to the second point is that you need to double check your role security level all right so right now we're gonna double check the security level of this table to do so right here i have this to do table right here that connect with the auth user right this one and so this is the simple policy for this one as you can see so right now i want you to pause the video and think what can go wrong with this policy or if there anything that we need to update or aware of all right so please do that okay so right now as you can see let's take a look at each one of the policy for the read right here i think this policy is fine because every to do every fill of this one it's okay to read by the authenticated user that log into your our application so i'm good with this one so this policy is fine so right now i'm going to check this one as a green great so the next one is going to be delete so the policy right here it's mean that anyone can delete this to do if it's belong to them 
So right now, this one is okay as well. Great. So right now, let's take a look at the create tit, this one. And so this one is only allowed the user that log into our application and call to create. Okay. And so, and also this one more policy right here, it need to create it by right here, need to be created by their ID. So it means that they cannot create a to-do for the other user. So this one is prevent that. But there's something that can go wrong with this one. So for example, this is might be the code that will you run inside your application, right? And this is, and so because the ID is auto-generated, the created at auto-generated, created by auto-generated. So the only field that we need to think about is the title. And the title here, so the code will be just past the title. And right here, the user will call from your application. And since you write this code, this code will be executed. But since we know that the, to insert into this one, the user can actually call it from outside your database, right? From outside your code. So they can call directly to your database and insert. So they can bypass this code. This code may be not relevant. And so let me show you how they can do that. So for example, if you go into the to-do application doc right here and go to insert, and this is the URL that need to do insert. And let's copy this. And let's go into this one. Oops, not this one. Let's copy this one right here and replace this one right here. So right now let's change to post protocol. And you may ask like, how can the user know which field of this to-do and things like that? So right now let's actually try to run this one without sending any field. It's gonna be error, let's send empty field. So right now, as you can see, there's some error that's sent to us. Okay, uh, there's some title right here that you can see this is the field of it that need to be passed. So the user right, right now probably have a good idea on which field that's needed. So for example, this is going to be the title and they can pass this going to be new title. Okay, so right now they hit send. Great, so right now it's created at. Let's go here. So right now, great. So right now we have this to do and it works similar to this one so what can go wrong with this one so the thing that can go wrong is that the user right now can add more field into here they can add the created at or anything else but you can see this is that's why it's not relevant to your code because your code that written that is executed from your application that will only pass the title right now but inside here the user can pass anything they want um, because it's the field of this uh, the table so it means that they can pass any date he want right here so right now for example i can copy this date right here and then i can paste this one and i can run which is still okay but if we look at the table right now as you can see the created ad is since 1970 is that making any sense so like for example this it's like your blog post and or your social media apps this is going to be failed right because how can the apps have a post in 1970. So then this policy here is wrong. So it's not good, not wrong, it's not good enough. And then the user need to be, can be bypassed that. So we can fix this one. So right now let's go in here to insert and go to edit. So one thing that we can do, we can do N and we're gonna do create it at need to be equal to now. Okay. This one is need to be equal to now. So let's click review, let's hit save the policy. So right now, if the user, this try the user, as you can see, right now, the we block this row security to well, we protect this created ad, so they cannot just do something like this, which is great. So right now, if we, they remove this one, and then they can run, and as you can see, this is still okay, and this is equivalent to this one right here. So right now, it's great, so it's fine, and so, Right now, I think it's 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 a green check for this one because, well, the user can do this whatever they want. But as you can see, this uh, it's the same thing from calling from our word table right here. So I think it's fine. So right now, I can change this one to green. Okay, great. All right. So right now, let's check the update policy for the to do. So for this one, the same thing. I don't want a user to update the created ad to any data that they want and they want to only update the title only okay but the existing policy right now that we have here the user can update title created ad and the id so right now let's try to prevent that so so for this one let's go into the table and make sure that the user can call to this one go to api and then go into the update and then for this one i'm going to copy this one right here 
key and then i'm gonna replace this and for the sam column let's go with id and this I and then for the sum value right here is going to be the column of this one so i'm going to copy of this one and let's go into with this one okay so great so right now we have this one so make sure that the user can be able to update this one so let's do this and do the patch and hit send this and then let's look at this title and as you can see this is updating okay so right now they can update the date as well for this date right here and let's say for example we're gonna go with the created at created at and for this one let's get the date of this one i'm gonna copy this and let's actually change this one to probably this year right here so we hit send and if we going back right here so you can see this is update be able to update so right now let's try to prevent this so you may think that okay maybe we can do the same thing for insert and as you can see the insert is do something like this so let's actually copy this and let's go to this one and then we can just replace this one right let's review and hit save and right now if we run this one again so let's say for example if i change this one and let hit send and if we go back so as you can see this is not being updated so may, you may think this is correct but right now, it actually, even if you remove this one, you, you cannot actually entirely update any table you want because the policy is right now it's wrong. So you can see this is not being updated because the policy for insert, it makes sense that for the new created, this is for the new created. So we going to allow them to need to check them to be equal to now. Okay. For the new created at, but for the update right here we cannot do the same thing because if you do this one it's going to be wrong so we cannot do this one uh, as for updated so how can we do this one so right now let me show i remove this one make sure everything is going back to work let review and hit save and right now let's hit send this one again and if we take a look at this one you should be able to see that this is being updated so how can we be able to prevent the user from this one and keep this just one okay okay so in order to do that you need to create a function and check before update this to do so for that i'm going to create a function and for the function let's say it's gonna be checks update to do okay so right now this is going to be a trigger function and the definition of this function uh, security advance and definer okay and then let's go into this one let's go into documentation this is i have written this one i'm going to copy this come back here so this function is check if if there's a new created ad if it's not equal to created ad we're going to raise an exception so this is a trigger function okay and right now let's make sure that everything's fine let hit confirm on this one go to trigger and a new trigger for this one and then you can select the to do table and you can do update before and then row row and then you can choose the update to do so right now i hit confirm so right now if the user try to update with the created ad so let's try go back here and hit send so you can see right now you cannot update created ad so this is to prevent the user from updating created at that same value as before. Okay. And make sure that the user be able to update this one as well. Let's change this one to update it at. Okay. And let's do this and hit send. So right now, and let's go in back into our to do. As you can see, we have the updated at and things like that. So right now we be able to do this one and we prevent the user from update our created at as well. So you may ask, what about ID? So ID here is fine. If the user update this one, if they give a valid value, they can update. And any relationship to this one will automatically change as well. So this is fine. So for me, uh, I, I do not care about this one. All right. So right now it means that this one is green. So right now our policy and uh, for this table, everything is checked. So right now we I'm confident that this app is okay if the user even though if the user can run this one outside of application to interact with our table it's still fine because the policy that we set up is secure enough even if the smart user they lazy to call from our application but they want to call it from their application by finding the authentication header and things like that by their own well they can do that 
and I'm okay with that because the policy is great for this table, okay? So this is a really simple table and this is a real simple case but I hope that this is gonna be a, uh, a good start and let you know aware of what can you do to avoid any situation you need to double check and try to prevent and things that the user can be able to do this all right all right so one more thing that I would like to mention is that you can prevent the user from calling to your database directly like we like I showed you before by implementing the everything is on the server so for example the application right now it's connect to this one and you can actually try to do something like this so for example you have uh, your server which is going to be let's say for example the server right here maybe this is like a server component or this is like um api and things like that if you are using with next.js and so you can use that to interact with your superbase for example on the operation such as uh, create uh, such as for example delete or update and things like that so if anything that you can think that okay the user may be bypass your code you can run that operation on the server but if it's not you can actually do it on a client okay and this is another way that you can do and how can you do that from the server so when when you do that on the server you probably do done use the policy so any policy that you have right here so for example for the inserts for the inserts and update you run this one on your server from your application you may need to remove this one so then to avoid the user uh, to call and this function because you enable the policy for them and if you remove that they cannot do it and and since you can call that from your server the only way that you can do this one is to use the superbase admin okay you need to superbase admin and so when you use superbase admin it's going to require the service role key okay so that's why this operation this function need to call from the server only and then any operation that you can call from here you can pass on your application logic let's say the user can call to this function on your server component or not or an api or not this is on your own this is so then because since you disable the role security level and you are using superbase admin so this is you need to make sure on your own okay uh, you need to double check that this is the other way that you can do if you don't want the user to be able to call like I showed you before. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. That's all I wanted to share. And hopefully you learned something. If you have any question, you can feel free to comment down below. And also if you want to have this documentation, you can grab the link from the description as well. All right, so hopefully you like this one. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe and see you in the next video.